Hello everyone. Today I'd like to show you how to paint a watercolor of Rainbow Falls in Hilo, Hawaii. Hilo is located on the Big Island of Hawaii. I'll demonstrate how to compose and brighten the colors of this beautiful scene. I'm starting with a three color gray made with yellow ochre, cobalt blue, and Matter Lake Deep. I'm painting the sides of the waterfall with this three color gray. It's mostly a bluish gray. I'm leaving lots of little bits of white paper showing. So I'm making small strokes, some long ones and some short ones, and I'm leaving white in between. And I'm also leaving a stripe of white in the middle of the waterfall. This makes it look like the water's moving. It gives it a sense of movement and sparkle. In watercolor, it's important to let the white of the paper glow through in between the paint, in between the strokes of colored paint. Now I'm going to start working on the rocks that surround the waterfall. I'm going to start with a warm mixture of burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and it's slightly pinkish, so I'm going to add some matter lake. I'm going to put this warm undertone down first with the plan that later on I'll go back and add some cool violets to give it a nice shadow effect. So color design in watercolor is something I'd like to talk about now and why I chose to make this pinkish warm color um, for an undertone. So I want to have a variety of colors and I'm already going to be having a lot of green in this painting. There are green trees, green plants um, in the foreground and I'm going to be breaking up those greens into a variety of green hues but there aren't really any reds in this in this composition and so when I have a landscape that has something that's brown or gray and I need an excuse to or a place to put a color that seems to be absent from my reference that's often where I'll put it. So I'll shift that gray into being a colorful gray. I do tend to follow the light and shadow patterns in my reference photos, but when it comes to color, I want to have colors in my painting that make a really good painting, not necessarily colors that are exactly like what's in the reference photo. I think it's a lot of fun to push colors and watercolor is such a beautiful medium um, it's just uh, one of those mediums where the colors can really shine through and really make the painting something special. So now I'm putting the gray color over the warm undertone and I'm leaving parts of it showing through. I'm also leaving some white paper showing through. The colors that I mixed are ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and matter lake. I'm going to use the same color mixture that I'm using on the face of the rocks to overlay the warm undertones for the cave part behind the waterfall. But I'm going to add more water to it with the plan of layering some other colors later on. I speeded up this part of the video where I'm painting the cave part of the waterfall. I want this cave to be more interesting than it looks in the reference photo. It needs to separate from the rocks up above, and it also needs to make the waterfall stand out in a really dramatic way. So I'm layering the colors while they're still wet. I'm using the color mixture of burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and matter lake, and I just wanna create the effect of there being rocks in the shadows behind the waterfall. Now I'm going to use cerulean blue and some Prussian blue to paint the water on the right and left side of the waterfall where it meets the dark rocks. I want to do this now while the rocks are still wet and let the colors run together. Letting them run together creates a soft edge and illustrates the look of the water moving. Now I'm going to use cerulean blue, Prussian blue, 
and some cadmium lemon to paint the water below the waterfall. In the reference photo, the water is very green, but that won't work for our painting because we have so much green foliage all around. We could just make the green foliage more yellow and separate it from the greenish water, but I like to push colors and I like to have big shapes and beautiful colors. And so what I wanna do is make the water a beautiful turquoise color and then have the greenery be different shades of green. So I'm painting this with my number six brush and I'm leaving lots of little white spaces in between. I'm being careful with my mixture to have some of my brush strokes show a more yellow turquoise and some of them show a deeper blue turquoise. Some of the strokes are lighter and some are darker and I'm coming up right next to where the waterfall is splashing into the water with smaller strokes of paint. Prussian blue is an old color. It's been around for years and years. I think since the turn of the century and it's just a gorgeous blue color, perfect for painting the ocean. It makes beautiful greens too when you want to mix it with yellows like cadmium yellow or yellow ochre. I'm continuing with making brush strokes in sort of a half circle movement surrounding the waterfall and leading up to the rocks on either side. I'm going to come down into where the green foliage is in a few places. I don't want the line of where the water meets the foliage to be too flat. I want it to make an interesting shape. Now it's time to start on the green foliage. I'm using permanent green and I'm also using a bit of sap green. The foliage has an upward movement and lots of small leaves. I'm going to add some cadmium yellow now and warm up some of the greens. I'm going to keep layering the greens like this, yellowish greens and then deeper greens, keeping all of the greens really bright because they are in the foreground and also because I want them to really stand out in front of the water. I'm putting some warmer yellows using Azo Yellow Deep down at the bottom. This helps to bring the foreground forward even more. It also creates the look of sunshine, sunshine hitting the beautiful green leaves. I'm being very conscious of leaving lots of white spaces in between my layers of green brush strokes. This gives the look of sunlight sparkling on the leaves and it just gives a nice light airy feel to the watercolor. I purposefully have the greenery um, come up above the pink rock line on the left side and I purposefully left it below the water line on the right side just to create a little variety in my foreground. Now it's time to paint the greenery and trees on the other side of the waterfall up on the on the hill. So for these greens they're in the middle ground and they need to be grayed down. For this grayed down green I used hooker's green and sap green and to gray it down I used a transparent red which was Matter Lake Deep. If I had used cadmium red it wouldn't have been so transparent and pretty. It might have been a bit murky and I wanted to have that nice clear transparent look to the paint. I'm using my number six brush still and I'm making strokes and leaving less white in the background. I want to have more white sparkle in the foreground and less in the background. This will help it recede visually. After I finish painting the background greenery in this beautiful grayed down green color, I want to paint a light green on the right side. I want to make sure that the overall value of the light green shape on the right side is at least three value shades lighter than the darker green in the background. I'm using cadmium lemon, water, and a little bit of, of sap green. I'm adding a few shadow shapes in between but mostly it's an overall light shape. This makes it contrast to the darker green in the background. I'm letting the variety of greens mix together while they're still wet, so I'm allowing the water to do some of the mixing. 
When I get close to the rocks, I'm closing off those white spaces and letting the greenery just sort of fall into that shadowy area of the rocks. This creates depth. Next, I wanna paint the hillside on the left and I'm gonna make this a really bright yellow. I'm using cadmium yellow, but I'm also using aurelian yellow. Aurelian yellow is a beautiful transparent yellow and it's perfect for making greens. It's also great for glazing and layering because it's so transparent. You can see now how the color shapes are working together. The blue in the water, the variety of greens, and the yellow hillside on the left. Now I'm going to make some of the foliage behind the waterfalls darker. I'm using Hooker's Green and Matter Lake. I'm going to layer small brush strokes over some of the green paint and also bring up some of the dark on the left side. This will create a nice dramatic vertical movement. Visually it will connect with the rocks below. For the sky, I'm using cobalt blue by itself. If you don't have cobalt blue, you can also use ultramarine or ultramarine light. You want to make sure that it's a blue that's different from the other blues in painting when you make a choice for which blue to use. In this painting, the blue below the waterfall is a turquoise blue, so it leans towards green on the color wheel. That means the best choice for a secondary overall big blue shape in the painting would be a blue that leans towards violet on the color wheel. And those choices would be cobalt blue or ultramarine. For the cloud color, I used a three color gray of cobalt blue, quinacridone rose, and yellow ochre. So the idea behind creating a beautiful painting with watercolors is to have a nice variety of colors and also a nice variety of values. You can't have lights without the darks. And so I definitely need some dark accents. Right now, other than the dark accents that I'm currently painting in the trees behind the waterfall, all of my values are a five or less. Even the dark value behind the waterfall in the cave is still only about a five. So now's the time that I need to start bumping up my colors and layering. I'm gonna add some darks to the water, some darks to the greenery, and some even darker darks to that cave area behind the waterfall. This will make my beautiful bright colors sing out. I'm still remaining true to my overall color shapes. So the darks that I'm adding into the water below the waterfall are Prussian blue, the same turquoise blue that I used in the first pass. I'm just layering over the, the water underneath with paint strokes that have less water and therefore more pigment. Now that my overall color shapes are established, it's time to put finishing touches on this painting. Within the blue area of the water, I'm remaining true to my original color shade of turquoise blue. And so the darker blue that I'm layering over the lighter colors is Prussian blue, the same blue that I used in part of the underpainting for the water. Notice how adding the darker colors really helps the lighter colors stand out. And notice how I left the lighter shades right below the waterfall because the white of the waterfall is reflecting into the water below. It's the same process for the greens that are in front of the waterfall. I'm layering darker greens that are at least three value shades darker than the lighter green underneath. Another tip with watercolor, with painting with watercolor, is that when you use a lot of water, and the watercolor sinks into the paper, it looks lighter when it's dry than it does when it's wet. So sometimes you'll think you've got the value right, but then when it's dry, it looks too light, and so you end up going over it again. But this layered effect is sort of an impressionist look, I think, and it's a really beautiful one for watercolor. In each of my overall color shapes, like this yellow one on the left, the colors that I'm adding that are the darker shades are still in the same color family. So the overall shape of that hillside is bright yellow. So that means that the darker hues 
that I add for the shadowy parts of that hillside should be a deep warm yellow. The colors I use to make the warm yellow are burnt sienna, azo yellow deep, and yellow ochre. I'm putting the same color mixture into the tree trunks on the trees behind the waterfall. So now I'm going to go with an even darker dark where the water meets the rocks and I want to add some dark details and texture to the rocks next to the water. So I'm using Payne's Gray mixed with Matter Lake. So where the dark color meets the, the top of the rock, I've left a hard edge and I'm making some detail lines just to give the rock some texture. But where the dark color meets the water, because this is a wet edge, I've softened it by adding some plain water and letting the darker color mix into the lighter color water below. This helps make it look three-dimensional and like a watery, soft, wet edge. I'm going to add some detail to the rocks on the right side as well using a watered down version of the same mixture of Payne's Gray and Matter Lake Deep. It's sort of a nice earthy violet. I'm adding a few extra blue accents to the left side of the waterfall. I think this blue helps connect it more to the blue underneath in the water below. And I'm going to add some even darker accents to the cave behind the waterfall. The dark accent color that I'm going to paint into the cave behind the waterfall is also Matter Lake and Payne's Gray. I'm not painting in the whole shape because I don't want a big, dark, flat looking shape in the middle of my painting. I just want to use the idea of that dark in that place in the composition to help my waterfall stand out. But I need to connect my darks. Always remember to connect your darks when you're painting. This goes for any medium. Connecting the darks is like, or the darks, you can think of the darks as the glue that holds your painting together. I'm looking for small areas where I can put darker accent marks. I want to be careful and go slowly at this stage in my painting because I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to overpaint it. And I want to make sure that I let those first beautiful colors shine through wherever they can. I want to have a good variety of light hues, medium hues, with just a few dark accents. I think a good value formula for a painting of a daytime scene is half medium values, a quarter light values, and a quarter dark values. This is a really good balance, and it'll help your, your light and medium values really stand out, while the dark values will give your painting just the right amount of structure. Continuing on with finishing touches, I'm using Azo Yellow Deep and now Cadmium Orange to add some brighter warmth to the foreground. Just a few strokes here and there where I have white spaces are just enough to give that accent. It's a nice color complement to the blues in the water around the waterfall. To give some texture to the part of the painting where the waterfall is reflecting into the water, I'm adding a few small brush strokes of dark accents just a hint of texture while still keeping with the overall light shape of the reflection. I hope you've enjoyed this video of painting Rainbow Falls in Hilo, and I look forward to seeing your paintings.